I'm Charlie Stern. This is the Stern Message. I analyze the news and I talk about how politics and government impact people's lives. This weekend, Saturday, June 16, 2018, and June 17, 2018, there were three separate articles in the New York Times about Sally Hemings. So Sally Hemings was an enslaved woman who had four children with Thomas Jefferson. Fascinating story, and I'm going to get into the details right after this. Helpful news analysis on topics that actually matter to you. Get subscribed and hit the bell so you won't miss the next video. The story is this. There's a historical museum called Monticello near Charlottesville, Virginia. 400,000 people a year go there. It was the plantation that was owned by Thomas Jefferson, and he had a bunch of slaves there. But there was one enslaved woman named Sally Hemings, and uh, she had four children with Thomas Jefferson. And there's just been, you know, a never-ending debate about how to recognize Sally Hemings. So it says here that the, uh, the, the Monticello plantation is opening a separate room to commemorate the life and acknowledge the life for the first time formally um, at that location of Sally Hemings. The, the, the whole concept of this reveal of, of Sally Hemings is based upon um, journals that were written by Madison Hemings, who was one of the four children that they had, that Thomas Jefferson and Sally Sally Hemings had together and in that in that in that document he kind of spells out that Jefferson and Hemings had some kind of an arrangement it was like a for lack of a better term in, in in contemporary terms they had what some people would call a situation ship she negotiated something with Thomas Jefferson essentially um, she worked it out so that their children would be free eventually so here's what Here's what the uh, historian says. We can't know whether Sally Hemings was serious about staying or bluffing. In pre-revolutionary Paris, where Virginia's laws did not automatically apply, she would have been able to sue for her freedom. Such petitions were regularly granted. In the end, implicitly relied in the end, she implicitly relied on Jefferson's promises and returned home. So she was an American, but she met Thomas Jefferson in Paris. She returned home with him. The terms of this treaty, this treaty, as Madison Hemings called it, were fulfilled. And his narrative explains why he and his three siblings, Beverly, Harriet, and Eston, were able to live their adult lives in freedom almost 40 years before the formal end of slavery. So, for the historians, what they're saying here is that they finally opened the door into the life of Sally Hemings, but they have to do it in a way that is, you know, both true to what actually happened but culturally sensitive to 2018. Um, so the newly opened space at Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's plantation, is represented as the living quarters of Sally Hemings, an enslaved woman who bore the founding father's children, but it is more than an exhibit. It is the culmination of a 25-year effort to grapple with the reality of slavery in the home of one of liberty's most eloquent champions. The Sally Hemings Room opened to the public on Saturday alongside a room dedicated to the descendants of slaves at Monticello and the earliest kitchen at the house where Hemings' brother cooked. So the problem is Sally Hemings had some kind of a deal with Thomas Jefferson, but the rest of the slaves were just plain old slaves. They were treated terribly and there was no negotiation. The overwhelming vast majority of all slaves had no power and the slave owners had all the power. So they don't want to tell the story of Sally Hemings as to suggest that slavery wasn't absolutely a horrible thing, which of course that it was. But there was some kind of a relationship. We don't know exactly what it was, but there was some kind of a story between Jefferson and Hemings. And no one knows exactly what it is. In fact, there are no photographs of Sally Hemings, um, but there's some indication in, um, in, in uh, written history um, that she was both light-skinned and that she resembled Jefferson's actual wife who had died uh, because Sally Hemings was her half-sister. So this is a very strange family um, and no one's been able to completely unravel the whole thing. Apparently the 1995 movie tried to portray that there was some kind of a love relationship between these two but that's not exactly crystal clear and even if there was 
it's really impossible to say what the boundaries of it were. It was 1789, and we can't possibly know what people's lives were like compared to our lives in the 21st century. So I'm going to try to get to Monticello at some point because I'd like to see this thing. I think it's a fascinating story. There were three articles in the Times, so obviously it's a big deal. Um, I'm Charlie Stern. This is my channel, Red Blue Talk. I talk about how politics and government impact people's lives. This is a story about race and reconciliation and trying to uh, square off with history, and I think it's absolutely fascinating. I do like to talk about how people can get on the Internet securely. Private Internet Access is a VPN provider that I like. They hide your IP address. They hide your DNS information. They hide what type of device you're using, and it can really provide a great deal of security when you browse the Internet, so go take a look at that. I'll see you on the next video and let me know whether you think you're going to go to Monticello and if you're interested in the history of Sally Hemings.